Hey, this is Leo for Actualized.org. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how to understand responsibility versus blame. One of the most important principles of personal development is this idea that you have to take 100% responsibility for your life. Now I've talked about this principle in other videos. I have a really popular video, a very powerful video called How to Stop Being a Victim, which talks a lot about this. I also have a, a video about uh, how to master and control your emotions, which talks about this. And I have other videos that briefly touch on this. But what I see sometimes in the comments section is that people get confused about what this really means. What does it really mean to take 100% responsibility for your life? And doesn't this then mean that I'm to blame for all the stuff that's going wrong in my life? That's the common objection that I hear to this. And this is such a critical topic that I wanted to shoot a video just to clarify this because if you're confused about what responsibility means, and if you don't actually take 100% responsibility for your life, then it's going to be very difficult for you to make any kind of progress in your personal development. You're basically going to become stuck permanently. You're going to become a victim and you're going to stay a victim. And this is how people kill their personal development forever. For some people, they cannot progress at all anymore because they have just entrenched themselves in victim thinking. So this is a very important thing for you to get over if you're suffering from this. So let's talk about it. When I say that you should take 100% responsibility for your life, I mean a very radical thing here. I mean that you take full, complete, 100% responsibility for everything that happens in your life. I mean the obvious stuff and the not so obvious stuff. I mean the stuff even that you are not necessarily causing, that you're still responsible for it. And this is where people have a problem. So let me clarify what I mean here. Because as soon as I say this, what comes to mind is this kind of objection. But Leo, what about rape and theft and murder? And I've got this toxic relationship. I've got this bitchy wife. What about her? Am I responsible for that? Or I've got this asshole abusive husband. Am I responsible for him too? Or I was born with certain deficiencies. Maybe I was born dis disabled, handicapped. Maybe I was born in a bad country. Stuff like this. And people will say, uh, how can you say that I'm responsible for that? You're saying that I'm to blame for getting raped? Or I'm to blame for someone stealing something from me? Or I'm to blame for getting abused in this relationship? This is what comes up. The first really critical thing to get across here is to make a distinction. Responsibility doesn't mean that you're at fault or that you're to blame for this situation. So for example, we take a rape and we say that the person who got raped, even though she didn't want it, and even though she didn't cause it, let's, let's assume that she didn't cause it in this situation, that she is still responsible for it. So what could that possibly mean? I'm going to give you my definition of what 100% responsibility means here in a second. Uh, but it's not about internalizing blame. The first thing you got to realize that as you grow yourself is that this whole notion of blame and fault that this is just a completely pointless activity. There's never any need to blame or to fault people for stuff. People or things or situations, there's no need for it. Really, that is a lower consciousness behavior that your ego creates, and your ego creates it because it makes you feel better. What's happening here is you're creating a distinction between good and evil. It's a false distinction. It's not a real distinction. It's a distinction created in your mind. And this is done because it allows you to say that, well, I'm the righteous one and that person over there or that thing over here is the evil one. 
So it creates this separation. It creates a stronger sense of you, a stronger sense of ego. This is why it's done. And when you're not conscious of this, that's why it happens because this is a very low consciousness activity. As you develop yourself more, as you become more conscious, as you do meditation work, as you uh, grow yourself in other areas of your life, as you understand victim mentality, then what tends to happen is that you stop assigning blame to, to anything at all because it's a totally pointless activity and more importantly, you just see through it. You, st you see through the sham of it. It really is a sham. It's like a, a con that you're playing on yourself when you do this good and evil dichotomy. So what then does that really mean? Uh, well, first thing, don't internalize the blame. When I say that you're responsible for the rape or you're responsible for this bad thing that happened to you, that doesn't mean that now you need to go and guilt yourself, make yourself feel bad about it. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying simply is what I'm gonna get to here in a second. And I'm holding it off because I want to contrast it with another definition that I see some uh, Eastern philosophers or mystics making. For example, Osho has this definition of responsibility uh, because in the East, they're pretty big on this because this notion is kind of central to enlightenment work, central to meditation work. So like one of the things he'll say is that responsibility to him means response dash ability. It's your ability to respond to the situation in the moment. So for example, he would say that you're responsible for the rape in the sense that now, right now, right this second, even though the rape, let's say, was five years ago, right this second, you have a choice as to how you respond to what happened five years ago. Some people will choose to bitch and moan and complain about it. Other people, they can take that exact same experience and transform it in their minds into something resourceful. And so they can have a resourceful response to an otherwise evil thing. So that's responsibility. And that is an important component, but I think that it's a bit of a play on words. And that's not what most of us mean when we say responsibility. So this leads me to my four part definition of responsibility. What it really means to take 100% responsibility in your life. So for me, number one, it means that you, first of all, you recognize that you cause a lot more of your life than you're willing to admit. You're the cause of a lot more things than you think you are. You're responsible in this sense for a lot more things than you are willing to admit. So what would this mean? Well, let's say someone says, Leo, I'm living in a really terrible country. I don't have the opportunities that people have in the first world country. How can I start a business? How can I be successful? How can I self-actualize in this third world country that I'm living in? Bad infrastructure, bad economy. I'm at a huge disadvantage. And you're saying that I'm responsible for this? Well, look, the fact is that, yes, perhaps you were born in that country and you're there now, but you got to understand that you're responsible and you're the cause of the fact that you're staying in that country. That's happening on a daily basis. You're deciding to stay in that country because you could also decide to leave that country. Now you might say, well, Leo, I can't leave the country. I don't have the right permits or the right visas or whatever. Well, maybe you can't leave that country to go to the US or maybe you can't leave that country to go to the country of your choice, but you can certainly leave that country. That's just a physical reality. That's a physical fact about you, yourself and your existence. Whatever country you live in, you can physically leave it. No one is really stopping you. Now, there might be certain disadvantages. Maybe there are very severe disadvantages. Maybe there'll be some repercussions, some punishments, whatever. But usually you can still leave that country. If only for a week, if only for a month. But technically speaking, you could leave that country for the rest of your life if you wanted to. So uh, I'm not saying that there's a right or a wrong here. I'm just saying that that's possible. And that when you say that, well, I'm not the cause of this. Well, actually, you are the cause of it. See, you're not admitting the subtle things that you're the cause of. Or maybe let's say there's a woman and she comes to me and says, Leo, I miss really abusive relationship. My husband that I'm married to, he disrespects me. He physically abuses me. He is verbally abusive to me. And he's not treating me the way that I want to be treated, the way I deserve to be treated. So clearly, he's doing the wrong thing here, right? He's the wrong one because 
I mean, it's not right to be physically abusing women. That's not right. Society says that's wrong. The law says that's wrong. And how am I responsible for that? I mean, I'm, a, I'm like a model wife. I try to be sweet. I try to be nice. I do everything I can. I try to work out my problems with him. We went to therapy and nothing seems to be helping. And I'm doing everything I can in this relationship. So how can you say that I'm responsible for this? Well, again, you're not acknowledging all the little causes that you actually are responsible for. The fact is that you can leave him right now. You can just get in your car and drive away and never see that person again in your life. That's an option for you. Now, whether that's a good option or not, well, maybe it's not. Maybe you have to weigh the consequences of, of what, that, uh, what that choice will do to your life. But that is an option. Also, you have to look at the causes that led you into this relationship. How did you get into this relationship in the first place? Wasn't that caused by you? Wasn't this entire relationship caused and co-created by you? Didn't you initially go on the date? Didn't you agree to go on the date with this person the first time you met him? Didn't you agree to have sex with this person the first time you had sex? Didn't you agree to move in together before you got married? Didn't you agree to keep living together, even though you guys were having arguments and you knew what he was kind of like after you were living with him. Didn't you agree to get married to him? Didn't you go through the whole engagement phase where you could have backed out of the marriage? Didn't you then finally on your wedding day, say your vows and put the wedding ring on? And then after that, didn't you still keep the marriage going even though you can get a divorce? And you're telling me you're not responsible for any of that? That now is just this dysfunctional relationship just somehow it just fell in your lap. It just magically fell in your lap. No, that's nonsense. And that's exactly why this victim mentality is so dangerous. And that's what, exactly why when you don't take 100% responsibility, uh, you leave a lot of causes kind of under the rug. And what this does is it literally cages you and you feel very constricted and confined. And right now there's literally probably over a million women in the United States alone who can hear this thing that I'm saying, this story that I'm saying, and say, yes, that's me. That's exactly me. I've been trapped. I've been trapped for months, for years. I don't know what to do. And I don't know how to get out. I don't know how to break free. And that's because they didn't take responsibility. Now again, notice this is very different than pointing my finger at you and saying, you're bad. You did something wrong here. I'm not interested in whether you did something wrong or not. I'm not interested in whether your husband is an evil or a good person. It, it doesn't really concern me and nor should it concern you. It doesn't matter. That's an ego game. That's a very shallow, low consciousness ego game, which distorts and it really diverts your attention from the, the thing that needs to be fixed. As long as you're playing that game, nothing gets done. When you stop playing that game, then you could be very hard nosed, kind of rational about the whole thing. And you can say, you know what? Yeah, maybe I made some mistakes. Maybe some of the stuff I did wasn't even my fault. Maybe this person tricked me into getting married. Maybe I didn't really know what he was like. Maybe I was just naive. Or maybe I knew and I still went in and I made these mistakes. Whatever it was, it doesn't really matter. But the fact is that there was a string of my behaviors, actions, and thoughts which created this situation. The situation, the situation I'm in right now was created by me. In fact, if I really think about it, every situation in my life that I'm in is always created by me. Even though there are causes that are out of my control. Just the very fact that I'm right here, right now, standing here, listening to this, I'm co-creating this moment. Because you can choose to close your eyes, close your ears, walk out of the room, turn your head, or whatever. You're choosing to be here. You're choosing to listen to me right now. That's you actively creating your life. You have to see this. You have to really see this. This is a very important idea. So the first point about responsibility is just uh, that you have to acknowledge all the little causes, not just the most immediate causes, but all the little causes, the whole chain of causes. See, life is a chain of causes. From where you are now, we can track back all the causes to when you were born and to a million years before that. There's a whole chain, a convoluted, complex chain of, uh, of stuff happened. Now, not all that stuff is in your control, but that doesn't matter. 
You're still responsible for it. The next point, taking 100% responsibility for me means you commit to never blaming anyone or anything else for the stuff that's happening in your life. This is like a contract, a covenant, a commitment that you make with yourself. And you make this commitment simply because you're tired of being a victim and you never want to be a victim again in your life. And this is the solution. The solution to it is to make this commitment. You could say, you know what? No, Leo, I would rather go and cast blame on people. I would rather say those people are evil and I'd rather say that I'm good and those, those things over there are good. I'd rather do that and continue living my miserable existence and getting the bad results that I've been getting. Uh, and I don't want to take, uh, I don't want to make this commitment. I don't want to take responsibility. Or you can say, you know what? I don't want that. Like why? why? That's, that's a stupid way to live. It's really a stupid way to live. It makes no sense. If I look deep enough, I can see that it's just an ego game, this whole blame game. Nothing needs to be blamed. I don't need to get angry at anyone. All I need to do is I just need to focus on the right actions that I need to be taking every single moment of my life. And I'll trust that that will fix all these problems that I have. And while there's no guarantees that it will fix those problems, it's a pretty good chance. There's a pretty good chance that you can fix a lot of your problems there. So, you know, it's, you got you to gotta cut out the stuff where you're saying, uh, if only that one person was cut out of my life, then everything would be fine. If only he did something different, just a little bit different, everything would be perfect. If only she behaved in a different way. If only I had a little better education when I was growing up. If only I grew up in a better country. If only my health was a little bit better. If only I looked a little bit prettier, a little more handsome. If only I was a little more muscular. All right, this kind of stuff. Uh, what you're doing there is you're blaming. You're blaming circumstances and people for the place that you're at now. You're not taking responsibility for all the chain of causes that led you up to here. And you're also not taking responsibility for all the actions you could do from this point forward to change all that. Because a lot of these things can be changed. Now, don't get me wrong. This video, it's not a black and white video. This video is a very gray video. So I'm not saying that you can change everything about your life. That's not the case at all. There's plenty of stuff you can't change. And so you might say, well, let's say, as an example, we take some disabled kid who doesn't have the use of his legs uh, from birth. And you might say, well, Leo, how's that, how's that kid responsible for that? How is he going to change that? Should he go now work his whole life to get motion of his legs back when the doctors tell him no? Uh, you know, that's a very extreme case. And in that situation, maybe you can't change it. Maybe he can't change it. Maybe he can work his whole life and he can't change it. Okay. That could be the case. The first thing you got to recognize is that that's not usually mm, a good representative example of how you play the victim. In situations in your life where you do play the victim, usually it's in areas where you actually do have control, more control than you think, because you've ignored all these hidden causes that you don't want to take responsibility for. And, all, and usually there's many different ways to fix your situation. But it's just that you haven't thought of them yet, you haven't reach, researched them yet, or you don't want to take those actions. And even with this kid, he should still take responsibility for the fact that he's in a wheelchair. He should still take responsibility. First of all, because maybe there is a solution that he's currently overlooking. Maybe he can get the use of his legs back through some sort of chain of, of causes. Uh, but also, I'm, I'm getting to some other points here, which are, which are going to answer that, that objection. So this brings me to point number three, which is that you always have at least some control. At least some. No matter what situation in life you find yourself in, even the most dire situation, you always have at least some control. And the reason that this is true is that at the very minimum, you have control of how you respond to the situation. So you might say, well, Leo, what if someone kidnaps me, ties me up? Let's, let's just come up with the most extreme example. Someone kidnaps me, ties me up, and locks me in solitary confinement, 
handcuffs me, and there I am, no water, no food, and I'm sitting there, and I'm about to die in a couple of days. They lock me up, I can't see anything, it's a pitch black room. So in that situation, is there still at least some control? And, you know, granted, <laughs> you're very limited in that situation, but there's still control. First of all, you still got a little motion. Even if you're handcuffed, you still got a little motion. You can still move your eyes. You can still probably move your head. There's still stuff you can move. So just even physically, there's stuff you can do. But more importantly, there's your mind and the way that you're reacting and thinking about the situation. And there you have almost unlimited control. No one can ever force you to believe or to think something that you don't want to believe or think. Uh, it's actually interesting because actually it happens when you're unconscious. If you're sitting there watching TV or if you're growing up and you're getting indoctrinated by media and society and, all, and your parents and all this stuff, actually that is what's happening by default. But if you take conscious control of your mind, then you can decide what you want to think about, where you want to focus your attention, how you want to interpret the external circumstances which are happening around you. This is very critical. People who are just starting personal development don't realize how critical this one point is. This point about being able to control your interpretations of reality. This is huge. This is everything. Because even though you might say, well, Leo, you know, uh, rather than controlling interpretations of reality, why don't I just change reality into the way that I want? Isn't that better? Like, go give me some real physical stuff. I want a nice car. I want money. I want a great relationship. Those things I can bank on. Now you're talking about this silly, airy-fairy, controlling your emotions, controlling your thoughts. Like, why is this important? Interpretations? Okay, maybe I can change an interpretation, but is that really meaningful? It's not going to change reality. But what happens, in fact, is that it does severely affect your reality. It affects how you behave. It, it affects how you interact with other people. It affects your motivation levels. It affects what you'll do in your life. It affects what you create, what you build, how you react to situation. It affects your mood and your emotions and how you feel. It affects your happiness level. It affects all your emotions. Sadness, anger, fear, depression, misery, suffering, loneliness. All of these emotions are created through your interpretations of reality. These are not created by physical reality itself. So, this is very powerful, and I have a video, How to Control Your Emotions, which talks more about how these interpretations work, so I won't go into all that depth. But you have to acknowledge how powerful this thing is. And finally, this brings me to point number four about what I mean when I say take 100% responsibility. It means that you acknowledge that your response in the present moment, right now, is the thing that matters the most. See, people really get hung up on the stuff that happened to them in the past. They'll say, but Leo, I was born in a bad country. But Leo, my parents didn't have money. Our family was poor. Uh, I had some, some bad disease or some bad condition. I had bad schooling or I had this horrible relationship that I was in. And that because of this now, I'm limited somehow. When you're saying all that, what you're doing is you're creating a very convenient story which relieves you of responsibility in the present moment. This is what Osho was talking about. Responsibility, your ability to respond right now and to now take action or to think new thoughts or to have a new interpretation. So for example, let's take that rape example. You know, people will say to me, well, rape, how can, how can you say that, that the victim needs to take responsibility for the rape? That's a... That's an offensive and horrible thing to say. But look, it actually is the case, if you believe that, you have to account for this following scenario. That one person can get raped, and then five years later, that person is still very bitter about it, very angry, uh, has difficulty getting into intimate relationships because she's afraid and she's nervous and she has resentment and, and all, this, all this baggage from the past. That's scenario A. Then scenario B, you've got the pretty much exact same person, but this person, and this person went through the exact same rape experience, but this person five years from now is living in a, in a great family, has a healthy relationship, is doing great 
financially and in other areas is emotionally healthy and fit and, and great and happy. Not miserable at all. And yet, one person and this person, both people experience the exact same traumatic event. Now, this, this person B, she has interpreted this traumatic event in an empowering way. Yes, it was a bad event. Yes, she would never want it to happen to her again. Yes, uh, the person who was the perpetrator, the rapist in this case, uh, should be locked up or put in jail or, you know, deserve whatever punishment he deserves under, under law. But right now, in the present moment, she can choose how she wants to respond. And she recognizes that if I hold on to this, this incident and I keep being bitter and resentful about it, then what I'm doing is that I'm choosing a very unresourceful response in the present moment to something that doesn't even exist anymore. The rape doesn't exist anymore. It's in the past. The past doesn't exist. But the present, you can decide what you're doing. And a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll sabotage their present ability to decide and to act because they dwell so much on the past. That they, they create this self-fulfilling prophecy effect where you're so focused on the past that it literally perpetuates into the future. And this largely accounts for the difference between these two people here that we talked about. So it's your ability to respond right now that's the most critical thing. No matter how bad your past was. And you can see examples of this. You can see celebrities and successful people who have had really bad initial experiences in life, but then went on to succeed. And the only reason that that happened was because they actually interpreted these situations in an empowering way. They actually drew strength from this. And believe it or not, it's possible to draw strength from rape. It's not the case that it always makes you weaker. In fact, there are women out there who have become stronger by it. Now, that doesn't mean that they would ever want to subject themselves again to the same situation. But I'm, I'm sure you've had experiences in your own life which were very difficult, very trying, very traumatic, that you wouldn't want to happen to you again, but that have made you stronger. They've made your character stronger. They've toughened you up. And so that's the key there, is that when you take responsibility for the now, then you're always ensuring that you're able to pick the most resourceful response and therefore create the best possible life that you can create. This doesn't mean that you can create any kind of life you want. There are limits. There are hard limits. But you can create something much more powerful than you probably presently believe if you really take 100% responsibility for your life. So that's my suggestion to you. I think you can see all the detail in this definition. There's really a lot to be said here. It's nuanced, right? This is a nuanced definition. We're talking about shades of gray, not black and white. I think that there's this interesting kind of paradox in personal development, which is that on the one hand, simultaneously, you both are the entire cause of your entire life, and you are not the cause of it at all. You both are and you're not. If right now you're very comfortable playing the victim, then what you need to do is you need to swing your pendulum to the opposite side. You need to say, I take full responsibility 100% for everything. That's going to be how you progress. Then actually what's going to happen after that, after you do that and you move from victim to creator in your life, after a certain while, you're going to get comfortable enough and you're going to say, wait a minute, there's some deeper stuff here. And you're going to go research personal development even deeper. Maybe you start meditation. Maybe you start looking into enlightenment. And what you'll discover there is that actually you don't have as much control as you thought. And it's going to be interesting because it's going to fuck with your mind because your ego, it likes to assume control for stuff. And so at first you're going to feel like, well, I've taken all this control for my life. I don't want to give it up. But then actually what's going to happen is you're going to swing your pendulum backwards. You're going to give more of it up. But you're not going to be the victim anymore. You're going to be moving actually from victim to creator to this uh, a very advanced stage called acceptance. Total acceptance of reality the way it exactly is without needing to judge it or blame it. But if you're a victim, that's a far distance away. So don't worry about that right now. The most productive mindset for you right now is to assume that I cause everything, literally everything. The fact that I choose to be here right now I chose to be living in this country. I chose to be living in this state. 
this city, this house that I'm in right now, the work that I'm going to, the relationship that I'm in, the family that I have, the amount of money in my bank account, how I look, how much hair I have, how much fat I have on me, how good my teeth look, all that stuff, responsible for everything. I'm responsible for all of it. That's very powerful. If you have the courage to accept that, you're going to feel a new sense of, uh, of strength. Because actually, when you take responsibility for stuff, this is good. This is a good thing. Now, people sometimes say, well, but I don't, you know, that's not my fault. It's not my fault. This relationship, this, this family I'm, I'm in, this dysfunctional family, or the, the bad job I have, my boss, he, he's, that's not my fault. But look, it's actually good. First of all, forget the fault thing. That's blaming, right? We already talked about blaming. Instead of fault, we're saying responsibility. It is your responsibility, but this is a great thing. Even when something is your fault, it's still a great thing because this means that you have the control, to ch you have the power to change it. It's nice when things are your fault. You need to get yourself up in your mindsets to the point where you're very comfortable admitting that stuff is your fault. Even if it's not your fault, you know? If something's not your fault, instead of bickering about it and saying, no, 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 that's not my fault, that's technically not my fault, what you should say is, you know what? Oh, well, I'll take responsibility for it anyways. So what? Even if it's not my fault, I'll just assume it's my fault. That's a really healthy mindset to take. Why? <laughs> because actually for me, like, I like that stuff, right? I like things to be my fault because that means that I can change it. I can grow myself over that problem. If something is not my fault at all, if it's totally outside of me, that's actually the scarier thing. That's scarier because then you have no control at all. But if I'm co-creating my toxic relationship, and if I'm co-creating the, the bad relationship I have with my boss, and if I'm responsible for the, the low amount of money in my bank account, and if I'm responsible for my crooked teeth, or the amount of uh, fat I have on my gut, those are all great things. Yes, it's a little painful to admit at first, but once you admit it, it's great because you got the sense of relief and it's like, okay, well then uh, I can change it. I can, I can do some stuff to actually remedy those situations. So that's where the power lies, right? As soon as you project your courage, as soon as you embody your courage, you make it real and you accept this stuff, then whew, so many possibilities open for you. It's amazing. Taking 100% responsibility, this principle, I think that if you honestly really look at it, then you have to say that it's probably not totally true. It's not totally true that you literally create every single situation, every single moment in your life. But I think that this is a very healthy attitude to take, at least for now, if you're at the point in your life where you're stuck and you're not getting the results you want. Later, you can distance yourself from that once you outgrow it. But right now, you haven't even touched it yet. You need to touch this principle first. You need to swim around inside and see how it affects the way you live your life. For me, this has been very powerful. At this stage in my life, now I'm actually doing some work with meditation and enlightenment where I'm kind of letting go of control and letting go of responsibility. That's actually a very difficult thing to do when you do it consciously and properly. When you do it unconsciously, then you're just being a victim. So uh, at this point, I'm not really suffering from any victim mindsets. I was a lot in the past. I fixed a lot of those. So I'm kind of evolving. Um, but I definitely got a lot of value out of this principle of taking 100% responsibility. And I'm still reaping the benefits of that. And there are still areas in my life where I could be playing a victim and I'll Fix those areas by applying this, this principle of 100% responsibility. Because you know what it really does for me? It allows me to see all those little hidden causes that I could change. It also allows me to, to create an empowering, resourceful interpretation. So if I want to get better at dating, and I think that it's not my fault that I'm not good at dating, well, I'll accept responsibility. I'll say, it is my fault. And then I'll take the burden on myself to learn how to get better at dating. And I've done that, and it's worked really well for me. And the same thing with uh, my nutrition, my fitness, 
and my, my weight level. I'll take full responsibility for that. Even for things that potentially are out of my control. So maybe my genetics, I can't literally change my genetics. Maybe it's true that I have a gene that actually predisposes me to be more obese. But you know what? I'm going to take responsibility even for that. Because I don't want to miss any little chance that I have to control this situation. And when I do that, I get amazing results. And I have. And I'll do the same thing with my career. I'll do the same thing with my boss. I'll do the same thing with my lack of energy in the morning when I'm waking up. I'll do the same thing with my bank account. I'll do the same thing with uh, my friendships. I'll do the same thing with my hobbies. And I'll do the same thing with actualize.org and the videos that I shoot. Right? Take extra responsibility. Extra. Extra. That's what you need to do. For example, I was shooting videos for a while when I first started and I was, uh, one of the things I was kind of disappointed by is that YouTube has this uh, compression algorithm. So when you put a video into YouTube, it tends to kind of compress it down and reduce the quality of that video. That, that disappointed me at first when I started because I'm like, well, I want my videos to be as sharp as possible. But then I took responsibility for that and said, you know what? No, I'm going to take full responsibility. Like it's my job to make my videos as sharp as possible regardless of any compression algorithms that YouTube has. I'm going to take full responsibility. And then over, over the months, what I did is I, I started making them sharper and sharper and sharper because I actually discovered hidden causes of the lack of sharpness in my videos which weren't YouTube related. But see, I wouldn't have seen those if I said, well, it's all YouTube's fault. You know, them and them da their damn algorithm. And my videos would have stayed fuzzy. But I said, no, let me take full responsibility. And then I found a bunch of hidden causes. I upgraded my camera, bought a much nicer camera ultimately because the, the clarity of the videos were very important to me. So it's just like stuff like that. I want you to become more mindful of that in your own life. Find examples where you do that yourself. The reason that, that I like to take more responsibility than necessary because I think that the greater danger is not that you take too much responsibility for stuff that is not in your control. That's not really dangerous. Nothing happens there. The only, the only thing that will happen there is that you'll experience some emotional discomfort, right? You'll experience emotional discomfort because you have to go uh, outside yourself. You have to kind of shake free of your ego for a little bit and take responsibility for something that potentially might not be your fault. But that's good. That's healthy. That's actually good for you. So nothing bad comes of that. But when you undershoot and you don't take enough responsibility, well, that really creates a big problem. Uh, that, mean, that means you're stuck forever. So if I have to choose between risking uh, not losing anything at all and getting stuck in my life forever, what do you think I'm going to lean towards? It's like, it's not even, it's just a no-brainer. There's no even question about which one you should lean towards. I'm going to always swing my pendulum towards this side of taking too much responsibility. It's not a problem. If I swing it this way and I take too little responsibility, I'm stuck. I never want to be stuck. Never want to be stuck. So I'll always swing it this way. That's the gist of it. I recommend you watch my other video about victim thinking. I recommend you watch my video about how to control and master your emotions. They will dovetail nicely with this one. All right, I'm signing off. Go ahead, post me your comments down below. I'd love to hear what you think. Click the like button right now, like this video. Share it with a friend, post it on Facebook or wherever you like to share videos so that more people can see them, then I can keep releasing more free videos for you. And finally, speaking of free videos, come sign up to actualize.org. It's a free newsletter. I release new videos every single week. Plus, I have a lot of cool bonuses already for my subscribers that are exclusive. You can only get them there. And over the next 6 to 12 months, I'm going to keep releasing more and more bonuses for my subscribers. So you want to stay on track with that. And the most important reason why you want to follow actualize.org is because I want to give you all the mindsets you need to really master your life and create the kind of life that you've always dreamed of, but also that you've always struggled to create. I know why you're struggling to create it because I've struggled to create that kind of life for myself. And it's all because of these kinds of mindsets that are not in place. When you put these mindsets in place, things clear up a lot. A lot. You won't believe how 
your reality changes. Not just your perspective on reality, literally your reality changes when these stronger, more empowering mindsets are put into place. This was a really critical piece of it here, but there's many other pieces. I wanna share those with you. It's a long-term project. I have hundreds of videos that I'm gonna be releasing. The best way to master this stuff is not to watch one video, but to stay on track and watch one video every single week or so, and just keep on going with it. Keep doing the exercises, keep studying this stuff, and your life will gradually improve until a few years from now, it will be something extraordinary. You can get extraordinary changes. So I'm really excited about sharing those with you. Sign up and you'll be all set.